Hey everyone, this is Nick, and NVIDIA has a pretty bad reputation in the Linux world. Well, let's be honest, it has a pretty bad reputation, period. You often read horror stories about how nightmarish it is to use NVIDIA on Linux, how things break, and how AMD is a much better choice. But I've been using NVIDIA GPUs with Linux since I started this channel more than five years ago and I can safely say that I never encountered any real problem. So I'm going to go through a few real-life test scenarios to see how much of that bad reputation is true and how much is just old recycled opinions. Unlike this segue to today's sponsor, which is neither old nor recycled. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare, and this time they're giving you access to a free report on how effective life patching solutions can be to prevent and defeat cyber attacks measured through the MITRE ATT&CK framework. If you don't know what that is, it's a nice tool to let you assess cyber attacks that target your systems. You can categorize them and plan how to defeat them. It breaks down these threats into 12 attack vectors, so it's easier to prepare for every type. If you want to see how well live patching solutions like the ones Toxcare offers did in terms of thwarting these attacks, click the link in the description below and download the free report. So let's look at the NVIDIA drivers, you know, the thing you need to actually use your GPU. The only current usable open source implementation are the Nuvo drivers, but let's be honest, they just don't work well. They are more a primer that lets you have a display output than something you'll want to use daily. The performance just is not good enough, so you will need the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. And yes, they are still proprietary, which is ironic, because back when I started using Linux, it was AMD that had the proprietary, terrible, no good drivers, and NVIDIA support was actually really, really good and open source. Now, installing these proprietary drivers is a complete no-brainer nowadays. I cannot think of a single distro that doesn't have them either on the very ISO, where you can install them by checking the install third-party software toggle, or that has a nice, well-maintained repo to access them, like Fedora, for example, where RPM Fusion can be enabled to install these. And this is the only way you should install these drivers, from the official repos of your distro or from a very well-known, very well-maintained third-party repo. Manual installation is convoluted and will definitely break with kernel updates if you're not careful. NVIDIA drivers are packaged by distros for a reason. These are maintained, updated to work with the latest kernel updates, and they won't break on you if you follow what your distro releases and apply updates from official repos. On every distribution I ever use, the installation of these drivers is one click from the software center if you can't install them right during the first install. All you need to do is make sure that you don't try and replace your current kernel by something unsupported that your distro hasn't packaged, because this will probably break your drivers. Now, a first big issue people report with NVIDIA drivers is screen tearing. This is something I have not encountered in a while. On both my hybrid graphics laptops with an RTX 3060 and a 3050 Ti, or on my desktop with a 3070. But there's more to that story. The laptops are Linux devices, so it's to be expected that everything would work well. Tuxedo and Slimbook picked the parts specifically, so everything should work normally, and it does. And on my desktop, I use a FreeSync monitor. FreeSync is AMD's anti-screen tearing technology, comparable to NVIDIA G-Sync. And the nice thing is that NVIDIA drivers can use a FreeSync display as a G-Sync display with one simple toggle in the settings, which means you will never see screen tearing with a FreeSync or G-Sync display. But what about regular, normal person displays that don't have these technologies? Well, let's take a look. I plugged my desktop's RTX 3070 into a basic 1080p monitor without any of these sync capabilities. The desktop uses X11, and as you can see, screen tearing just is not a thing here either, at the default 60Hz refresh rate of the display. Now, if I launch a game to see how well things go, for example Darktide, with VSync off, we can clearly see some big tearing happening. 
with VSync on, it disappears. So screen tearing does not look like a problem anymore. But if it still happens to you, or if you really hate VSync, you filthy pro gamer, here is how you can get rid of it. You can just auto start a command when your computer starts with the following command line. NVIDIA dash settings dash dash assign current meta mode equals NVIDIA dash auto dash select plus zero plus zero brackets forceful composition pipeline equal on brackets. And yes, I left that command in the video's description. I do not expect anyone to have to type this. Add that command to your startup applications and you're done. It will turn on the force full composition pipeline option of the NVIDIA drivers after each reboot and this gets rid of all screen tearing. Now, you can do this graphically with the NVIDIA control settings panel, whatever it's called. You can just check that thing in the advanced tab under your monitor, but it won't stick after each reboot. Don't ask me why, it just doesn't, it's completely stupid. Okay, so no screen tearing, but how about multi-monitor support? So I plugged my laptop running Wayland into the same external monitor, the basic 1080p one, using the HDMI port that's connected to the NVIDIA dedicated GPU. Everything works. The external display is detected. I can set the resolution correctly for the internal monitor or the external one. I can set different refresh rates, move the displays around so they are positioned like they should, and I can even select different fractional scaling factors on each display because Wayland supports that. Nothing to report here. It works exactly as you'd expect your kidney priced GPU to work. I also plugged in two displays onto my desktop, the 1080p one and my usual 1440p ultra wide, straight into the RTX 3070. And no problems here. Both displays are detected immediately. I can change the refresh rate on both and use 100Hz on the ultra-wide and 60Hz on the 1080p one. I can have them as separate displays or mirror them, although this looks absolutely weird because they don't have the same resolution or the same aspect ratio. And I can decide which is the primary one, move them around, it just works. And of course on X11 it cannot handle different scaling factors between the monitors, but as we've seen on the laptop, it works on Wayland. And I had the same experience with KDE Plasma. No issues to report here. Multi-monitor support works normally. Now, another thing people tend to hold against NVIDIA drivers is the hybrid graphics support on laptop. As in, you have a laptop with a dedicated GPU from NVIDIA and an integrated GPU from AMD or Intel. Now, I don't own an AMD plus NVIDIA device, but I do have two laptops that have an integrated Intel XC graphics chip and an NVIDIA GPU. So let's start with the laptop running Wayland. And yes, don't worry, if you stick around for a little bit longer, we'll talk about Wayland support. So how well does hybrid graphics work on Wayland? Well, perfectly, on this laptop at least. It runs Fedora 37, and on Wayland it seems that hybrid mode is the default. And it's the only mode you can use. I could not find a way to move it back to the Intel GPU only, or Nvidia only. Which means battery life will not be optimal, of course, because even when you're not using the NVIDIA GPU, it's still awake and it's still going to draw a little bit of power. So hybrid mode works perfectly. You can right-click an app and decide to run it using the dedicated GPU, or just run any other app, which will use the integrated GPU. Some apps will automatically use the NVIDIA card, like games, some won't, like DaVinci Resolve, which needs to be run with the right-click option. On X11, the experience is pretty much the same. Hybrid mode is the default, and you do get a bunch more options in the NVIDIA control panel. You do lose fractional scaling enabled by default, at least in GNOME. You'll have to enable it in Dconf. And you also lose touchpad gestures, but these things are not linked to NVIDIA drivers. It's just that X.org sucks in that regard. And yeah, okay, don't get mad. It's more like desktop environments never bothered to implement smooth one-to-one -one gestures on X11, even though Elementary OS proved that it can be done. If you want to switch profiles on X11 in GNOME, you can install the GPU profile selector extension and the NV control application to get a quick settings menu that lets you switch between various GPUs. On KDE, I don't think there's a way to switch by default Although OpenSUSE has an applet for that called SUSE Prime, and there's a third-party app called Optimus Manager you can also use. 
It only seems to work on X11 though. On Wayland, even if you select another GPU, when you reboot, it will still be in hybrid graphics mode. And in all cases, if you change the GPU, you need to reboot. But that's the case with every other GPU vendor on Linux, as far as I am aware. Now let's talk Wayland support. And Nvidia has the reputation of not working under Wayland. But that's not true anymore. As demonstrated before, it works just fine. I've been using it on this laptop for a while now, on Fedora. I never used X11 on this laptop since I installed Fedora 37 on the day of its release. And it's even the default if your GPU is recent enough. Everything works as it would on a normal Wayland session. Touchpad gestures, no screen tearing, fractional scaling support, screen sharing and recording, and running any application. And, of course, the limitations of Wayland are also present with Wayland and NVIDIA. Games will use X Wayland, which means that there's gonna be a small performance dip, and you cannot screen share X applications through the screen sharing portal of Wayland unless you install the X Wayland Video Bridge tool that KD Devs just developed. Now, personally, I've been editing videos on my laptop using DaVinci Resolve, which runs using X Wayland, I played some games, I use OBS to record my screen with the NVENC encoder, and I've had no problems at all. Same experience on KDE with Wayland, it just works. Touchpad gestures, no screen tearing, fractional scaling, hybrid graphics mode, multi-monitor support, everything is as it's supposed to be. And that's with KDE 5.25, not 5.27, which also improves general Wayland support drastically. So, as far as I'm aware, the Wayland issues with NVIDIA are Wayland issues, not NVIDIA issues. But then there's the power management, and that's where things go down. On my laptop, closing the lid will suspend the laptop. The logs show that it enters S2 idle mode. But very regularly, opening the lid does not wake the laptop back up, and I get a black screen. I can get out of it by just getting into a TTY, then moving back to TTY1, which seems to be the one where my graphical session runs. So I just press Ctrl, Alt, Function, and F2, then F1, and I'm good. But it's not what I would call a smooth experience. And in idle mode, the energy consumption is probably way higher than what it's supposed to be. If I close my laptop's lid with 100% battery, if I open it up 24 hours later, it's completely depleted, which is not normal. I could not find a solution for this. On my desktop, running Fedora also, but with X11, suspend works perfectly, and resuming also happens without any issues. And on the laptop on X11, suspend and resume also work fine. So it seems it's an issue with the Wayland session and the NVIDIA drivers that's causing resume to fail on Wayland. Energy consumption is also very high on X11 while suspended though. So everything is perfect, right? Well, that's not the full story. All my tests are done using the latest NVIDIA drivers available on Fedora 37 with GNOME and on Ubuntu 22.10 with KDE 5.25. And all these devices have relatively recent NVIDIA GPUs. So it's only two distros, two desktop environments, and three different cards from the same generation. Support for older GPUs, like the RTX 10 series or older ones, might not be as good and might require you to use older legacy drivers, which very probably won't support Wayland and might have a lot more issues. But all of this still shows that Nvidia on Linux is not a horrible experience, at least if you have a relatively recent GPU. I would say from RTX 20 series and onwards, you're just not going to have problems. So this does not invalidate any horror story you might have experienced or read online. But as long as you have a recent GPU, you'll have a great experience. But why would you want an NVIDIA GPU instead of an AMD one? Well, the main reasons are content creation and gaming. NVIDIA is still king in that regard, even on Linux. If you want to use professional video editing tools like Resolve, NVIDIA is your only option. If you want the best screen recording or streaming experience, NVENC with OBS has no equivalent just yet. It just uses way less CPU than other methods and lets you capture gameplay footage without much performance impact. If you use CUDA, you need NVIDIA. So yes, there are a bunch of reasons to prefer NVIDIA to AMD, even on Linux. 
And sure, the driver is proprietary, although I have hopes that this will change in the future, with Nvidia's latest source code drops and various efforts alongside Nuvo to use that. And sure, you will also have to stick to your distro's kernel versions and Nvidia drivers to ensure everything runs smoothly. But if you manage to get your hands on a relatively recent Nvidia GPU, then first, congrats, you're probably a rich person. And second, you'll get just as good an experience as with any other GPU vendor, apart from a few caveats on Wayland and with energy consumption. And apart from this segue to today's sponsor. If you're looking to buy a new device and to run Linux on it, stop looking at Windows computers and hoping that your favorite distro will just run well on it, because that's just a headache. Buy something that was designed specifically for Linux and remove all of those issues. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that do just that. They run Linux out of the box. The components were picked specifically because they're compatible with Linux. And you have plenty of options for every price point, every need, every device can be configured and customized to your liking. And all laptops are openable, repairable, upgradable, including the SSD, the RAM and the battery, and sometimes even the wireless card. So if you need a new computer, stop bothering with Windows computers. Buy something from Tuxedo in the link in the description below. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, well, there are plenty of links in the description as well for my social networks or for LibraPay, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube thanks, YouTube memberships. You know how this works. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.